Good evening, you're watching News Mongolia and Beyond. I'm your host, Tandar Gambalter. And for our top stories, Invest Gobi 2023 conference was held in Umgo province. Green development and the enriching the living environment takes center stage at the investment conference. And Germany will provide Mongolia 78 million euros within the framework of cooperation. And for the news, stay tuned. In 2022, Umnogo province was ranked first in the country in terms of economic performance and seventh in the terms of infrastructure development. Around 145 billion MNT was collected towards the state budget, which constituted 5.3% of the state budget's total revenue. In the last five years, the number of registered enterprises in the province has increased from 2,600 to more than 4,000. Simultaneously, the province experienced a remarkable threefold increase in its population, while the mining sector continues to play a pivotal role in fueling the province advancement. Umungov is steadfastly working to diversify its economic portfolio and reduce reliance on any single industry. The province has wisely charted a multifaceted and sustainable development policy aimed at fostering economic diversification and resilience. The two-day Invest Gobi 2023 conference to be held on September 28th and 29th emphasizes the above topic. <laughs> Following the mining industry, many SMEs working in supply and transport sectors are operating here in the region. Thanks to this event, those SMEs will be able to receive information on building and attracting investments as many investment and capital companies are attending here today. We expect it will create a good partnership and possible projects in the future. Invest Gobi 2023 investment conference will take place for two days after September 28th through 29th. More than 450 representatives of relevant offices, enterprises and citizens will take part at the conference. During the conference, there were sessions and discussions covering mining, energy, infrastructure, tourism, business environment and investment. In addition, commercial banks, brokerage firms, security companies presented their products and services to local citizens and enterprises. In 2011, 35 companies from Mongolia were generating assets from international capital market. And interestingly, 20 of those companies were from the Umlogo region. My message is people working and living here are generating a substantial amount of savings. So people are starting to get interested in the stock exchange and investments. Noteworthy to say that people can also invest into local domestic companies. <laughs> Over the past two years, the Municipal Assembly and the Office of the Governing Authority of Umunkov Province have been working on a special policy to increase loan sources to support small and medium industries. 10 billion Mongolian Tukriks has been added to the state loan fund for supporting these type of businesses from the local budget of the province. The industrialized area needs to have a good infrastructure including clean water pipes, waste management, central heating, etc. Therefore, we have allocated 100 hectares to create an infrastructure development zone and are currently working on attracting investments. We are planning to distribute the land through an open tender and bidding process. In the future, the conference is planned to be held annually to introduce the investment opportunities, business environment and policies and activities of Umnogov province regularly to domestic and foreign investors. More than 450 investors, enterprises and representatives of citizens participating in the investment conference of Umnogov discussed mining, energy, infrastructure, tourism, business, environment and investment. Currently, 16 mining companies are active in the territory of Umnogov province. Last year, the province generated 145 billion Mongolian Tigriks towards the state budget from the above companies, and this year it is tasked to collect 451 billion Mongolian Tigriks. Officials participating in the conference emphasized that mining companies should not only create budgets but also actively implement their social responsibility. 
In order to attract specialized professionals to the Umlau region, we need to create work opportunities for those specialists, as well as for their family members who come to live here. In other words, we need to create a pleasant living environment. Therefore, the local and foreign investors are essential for developing the region to create a pleasant living environment. Oyutalga is one of the three strategic deposits operating in Umungov province. Since 2010, Oyutalga LLC has purchased goods and services worth of 1.2 million US dollars and financed 385 projects to the tune of 122 billion Mongolian Tugriks. In particular, 90 projects such as schools, kindergartens, hospitals, museums, water purification facilities, boilers, flood dams, and herdsmen's wells were financed to support support local sustainable development. The company plans to spend 50 million US dollars on the development of Hamburg Sum over the next five years. Well, well firstly, is uh, the expectations of communities across the world has uh, shifted significantly around the, the expectations around mining companies and uh, the areas that we mine in. And we are very proud in, uh, in, in our uh, uh, current uh, ESG requirements and, and how we fulfill them, especially uh, in the area that, that we uh, operate in. Uh, in the Hamburg community, we have a, uh, the highest uh, um, water recycling rate um, and our, the, the way that we engage with the local herders and the government, I believe, is of the highest uh, world-class standard. Undoubtedly, Omanagov province faces a critical water scarcity issue. To combat desertification, the province has launched its second irrigation campaign, digging over 100 wells and initiating the construction of a 100-kilometer green wall of the Gobi. Omanagov leads the nation in cultivated forest reserves, highlighting its commitment to sustainable land management. <laughs> Our green development initiative includes tasks to create a desexual tree habitat, grow the forest zone that will protect from dry desert winds, and create an agricultural park around the Old Land Lake area. As today's conference is being attended by representatives from business and investment, as well as think tanks, I'm looking forward to the opportunities to boost and expand our partnership and cooperation in the green development sector. <laughs> Mongolia's Gobi region is the main region for mining development. During the extraction of minerals, significant environmental pollution occurs. Our company is engaged in the reforestation of abandoned land. We are participating in the Invest Omnogol conference to find new business partners. During the conference, participants engaged in discussions about potential energy projects, methane gas initiatives, and the promising Harmakta gold and copper deposit, which holds the potential to be the next Toyotatra, concurrently addressing water scarcity, expediting infrastructure development, and enhancing citizens' living conditions remained prominent topics of discussion, underscoring their significance on the agenda. Now let's take a look at the Mongolian affairs. A cooperation agreement has been established between the governments of Mongolia and Germany, building upon a long-standing partnership. Germany has consistently supported Mongolia's development, providing over 500 million euros in soft loans and grants as far back as the 1990s. Germany's key focus is to assist Mongolia in its ongoing reform efforts. This includes creating an inclusive society, reducing poverty and fostering sustainable economic development in line with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. Germany has committed a historic high of 78 million euros as part of this cooperation. Part of this funding, 29 million euros will support national programs with additional resources allocated to help through the Global Fund. The cooperation will cover three main areas, including sustainable economic development and education, climate and the energy sector, biodiversity and nature conservation. Representatives from Mongolia led by Batu, State Secretary of Minister of Economy and Development, and Germany led by Yanis Nyabhitao, Head of the East and Central Asia Department from Federal Minister of Economic Cooperation and Development, have solidified this partnership demonstrating a strong commitment to mutual growth and progress. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank.
Here's the international news from our partner agencies. The United Nations has sounded a grave alarm as a staggering number of refugees, predominantly ethnic Armenians, flee Azerbaijan for Armenia. The mass exodus, prompted by a recent offensive, has left arrivals traumatized and in desperate need of immediate assistance. UNHCR warns of a critical situation at the border with resources urgently required to support those seeking refuge. The United Nations expresses profound concern over the growing influx of refugees departing from Azerbaijan towards Armenia. The large-scale departure of ethnic Armenians from the mountainous region within Azerbaijan commenced on Sunday. The High Commissioner for Refugees on um, the situation in the Caucasus, UNHCR, says it's deeply concerned about the rapidly increasing number of refugees fleeing into Armenia with long queues reported at the border. UNHCR tells us that people arriving are traumatized, exhausted and hungry and need urgent psychosocial support and emergency assistance, including warm clothes and blankets and medicine. As of Thursday morning, Armenian officials reported that 74,400 individuals comprising over 60% of Nagorno-Karabakh's population of 120,000 had sought refuge in Armenia. The influx shows no signs of abating. Filippo Grandi, the High Commissioner for Refugees, uh, said today that UNHCR convoys with more relief supplies are on their way and that the UN agencies is ready to mobilize additional resources to support the humanitarian efforts of the government and people of Armenia. As part of the response that is led by the government of Armenia, UNHCR teams are on the ground providing immediate assistance and closely monitoring the situation. Following a swift and forceful offensive last week, Azerbaijan aimed to regain complete authority over the breakaway region. They insisted that Armenian troops in Nagorno-Karabakh disarm and called for the dissolution of the separatist government. The High Re Commissioner for Refugee warns that the t with temperatures dropping and limited accommodations, emergency support is urgently needed. Uh, UNHCR is calling for the protection of civilians in full respect for international humanitarian and refugee law. UNHCR also reiterates its call to refrain from actions that would cause further displacement of civilians and to ensure their safety, security and of course their human rights. Despite assurance from Azerbaijani authorities that they would uphold the rights of ethnic Armenians, apprehension of potential reprisals persists. This concern is underscored by the arrest of the former leader of Nagorno-Karabakh's separatist government, who has detained while attempting to cross into Armenia along with tens of thousands of others seeking refuge. Here's the weather forecast of all major cities. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you next week with more news and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.